Hey guys, it's Eric from Dehaven Camera, um, and in today's video we're going to talk about rods, uh, their correct spacing and insulation. So we've seen the rise of small cameras like the Pocket or the FX3 and some of the other non-standard size cameras where having the right rod spacing can be really problematic for adding accessories. So let's say if you have a small rig cage on an FX3 with the wrong base plate, your rods will be in the wrong position and then mat boxes and motors, things like that don't fit. So we'll talk about the three different types of rod spacings, which are industry standard um, and how they're used. So the first one and most common, which you'll see on a lot of the smaller and newer cameras would be 15 mil LWS. So that's the 15 mil rods like we see here spaced fairly tight together and directly underneath the lens. The next spacing, um, which would be kind of the oldest spacing, would be 15 mil studio. So that would be 15 mil rods spaced widely apart. Generally, one will be closer to the, the, the edge of the lens on the operator side and one will be further away. As you can see as well, these would be below the 15 mil LWS spacing. So the height from the center of the rod to the center of the lens is a defined height. We can't just arbitrarily put that anywhere because then accessories won't fit. The next spacing, which is most common for large lenses, is 19 mil studio. So again, as you can see, below our 15 mil LWS base plate, we have two 19 mil rods spaced equally to the center of the lens. So again, it's just wider than the 15 mil LWS. So in practice, how do we see these installed? So when a correctly set up, let's say, pocket 6K like this, we have a 15 mil LWS base plate mounted to a uh, tilted cage. So tilted cage, tilted LWS base plate with a correctly spaced set of rods. And as we notice when we put the mat box on, our mat box has the lens nicely centered in the hole on the mat box. That's again because the spacing is correct and the position is correct. So now we can put on a donut, um, block the light, we can mount the mat box on correctly and we don't have any fitment issues. This also allows for plenty of space to mount our motors so that we don't bind up underneath the lens or have difficulty with tightening the motor. What we'll see with this pocket is an example of using the wrong base plate on a cage. So with this one we have a tilted cage but we put a small rig base plate off a different camera. And as we notice now the spacing's too short and this is really common we see. So once we put the mat box on, even with an adjustable mat box, we're much too low and the lens is now not centered in the mat box. We're actually seeing the mat box with the lens. So having the correctly spaced height allows us to add our accessories and not interfere or not have interference issues like this. So how does that extrapolate to the bigger cameras? So when we come over here to our Alexa 35, we actually have a few options on this camera. So this camera has overhead 15 mil LWS spacing. So that would be the same height from the center of the lens to the top as it is from the center of the lens to an LWS here on the bottom. We also have 19 mil studio in this camera, which allows us to put bigger lenses. Now this is an example of how having incorrect spacing or using the wrong set of rods can affect your build on bigger lenses. So this is a lens with a 136 front diameter. If we choose to use 15 mil LWS, we can see here that now the motor is very difficult to get to. We can't tighten it. It's also leveraged in a way that this motor is just going to want to spin off the, the lens. So this can also be a problem when we go to use lens supports. So to be able to correctly support this lens, if we tried to put a 15 mil LWS set of rods on this large lens with a 15 mil LWS support. When we put it in, it's not going to clear. I've seen some people try to come in through the back and try to get this in. And again, it's not going to correctly clear the lens. That can be dangerous to damaging the mount or damaging uh, the flange on the lens. So what we want to do for a large lens like this is use something like 19 mil studio. Now with the 19 mil rods, it gives us plenty of space in here to put in a proper lens support with the proper height. So we can easily slide this in underneath the lens. Screw that into the lens correctly. And this also gives our AC plenty of room to work. So they've got enough room to get to the lens. So now with the additional height, we can easily get our motor in without having to bind it up underneath the lens. We, can, we have plenty of room to work. We can get to the thumb screw. And now the motor's sitting in the correct position so that it won't skip off 
or fall off the lens and see that, that skipping that we commonly see when they're incorrectly installed. So by doing this 19 mil studio, we have proper spacing. Our map box, if we choose to use a 19 mil studio, map box will fit. Our lens support fits and we have a safely mounted lens. So understanding the different rods and when to use them and the different spacing will allow you to configure your camera in the best way possible and use it with the most amount of accessories. You can always reach out to us if you have any questions and don't forget to bring all your accessories to your prep so that we can help you get it configured correctly so you don't have any confusion when you get to set.